chicken salad, right, Tracy? Yes. Oh, and some other things. Soup dumplings. And we're making a lemon custard ginger oh, invention with lychee nuts. And this is all a celebration of Asian fusion here in Los Angeles. Are you ready? I'm ready. It already smells good. It already smells like, wow, what do we have? We have dumplings going just to get us in the mood, yeah? Yeah, there's milk and eggs, chicken dumplings. <laughs> and so Tracy and I shop all the time. We travel all the time. And our beat is food market. And so we didn't even have to go to the farmer's market today. We didn't have to go to the grocery store. It all came to us from milk and eggs. And you shop online for your farmer's market quality stuff. That's what we've got. We've got um, Napa cabbage. We've got red cabbage for color. Um, there are the aforementioned lychee nuts. And what you have with Chinese chicken salad is really, really beautiful color. Um, and, you know, sometimes you get that in the restaurant. Sometimes you don't. But because we're making it ourselves, ooh, we get to do it our way. So um, the recipe for this is on the blog. It's on the note section of this site. And uh, we're live, of course. Did I mention that? We're live. Yeah, Anything could happen. Yeah. It, yeah. OK. And we it have has. Christian, the cameraman, <laughs> who's going to um, fix anything that we screw up. <sighs> Ready? Ready. Um, I like this idea of the dumplings, probably because I can smell them. And let's do those first. Okay. There's a trick to them. Um, oh, so sorry. And here it is. If you've been to a famous restaurant in Shanghai called Dim Tai Fung, you know about this. Dim Tai Fung soup dumpling. Um, we have this in Los Angeles. We're very lucky. And I'm going to show you a rough variation on how to make them. If you really want them, go to Dim Tai Fung. They're all over the world. But to do, um, to do basically give homage to this incredible dish of theirs, I'll show you what you do. <clears throat> you take a chicken broth, a seasoned chicken broth, and that is basically chicken broth with soy sauce, with some green onions, and maybe a little mirin, a little uh, pepper, a little garlic, things that you like to get an Asian spicy flavor. So that broth goes in um, ice cube holders. These are ice cube trays. Okay. Yeah, I like the little hearts. Isn't it cute? <laughs> um, you can also um, put tempered chocolate in there. That's why I came upon them. So then I've got seasoned pork. So I just put those together in this dumpling and wrap it up and freeze it, and then when the, we've steamed them, the um, soup will melt inside this dumpling. And so you'll have soup and seasoned pork inside the dumpling. Huh. Now, I can't do that and talk about it at the same time. Clearly, that's not possible. So we'll put that little damaged one over there and try again. So, okay, so you just put this in, and then you put this on top? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And to get them to hold together, you can put a little um, water on your hands. Oh, this fit. This did it. Yeah, there you go. Uh, egg white also is another thing we use to keep pastry together when we need to. But you're just going to fold that can up. Can you cheat with putting another one you over can, it? You can cheat so many ways in this. This is, again, if you want this done right, you're, you're going to go to Dim Tai Fung. And if you want it just for a fun Sunday dinner like we're going to have later, that's how you pinch them together. You're gonna store these in the freezer until we're ready to go and we'll steam them and show you how that's served, okay? Voila. Ooh, and this is soup, yum. Okay. There's some other things to consider for your meal. If you're serving a dessert, you have to do a little baking portion on this one, but we made it easy for you. We took a box of ginger lemon cream crackers, car crackers. Any ginger snap will work, a hard ginger snap will work, and you put them in the food processor, process them for a few minutes, well, really just one minute, and you'll get cookie crumbs. Add to that about two tablespoons of melted butter, and you'll get basically a dough. And you make that cookie, take that cookie crust dough, put it into a lined baking tin. And what happens is, when we bake this, they firm up a little bit and we'll hold together. That's your ginger snap crust. And we spoon in lemon curd on top of that, and a little leafy nut and strawberry on top of that. 
So we just need to bake these so that starts to bake from 350, about 15 minutes, and I'll show you what they look like. Ready to go in. Okay. Another thing we're going to show you as we go forward here to get to this, that garden of beauty, you need some knife skills. And um, Tracy did a beautiful job on these. And I think we should probably show everyone how we do this, Trace. Yes, but I don't have the knife skills, so mine was messy. I'm looking to learn more from you. So show me well, the better way. Okay, favorite knife, very important. This is a global. I just love it. It's the right size for me, which is one thing. Um, you have a different knife, which is, I think, sharper. Uh, you've got a xy xylex. It's a cheap plastic knife. You've got a cheap knife. plastic knife and it does not feel bad at all. Listen, you know, knives are, oh, they're like jewelry. You know, some people like a lot, some people like a little. Um, you have to, you, you, you need a selection, obviously. Um, so, for me, um, I, I do like this. I just got used to it. You can, th these are expensive um, at a uh, kitchen shop, you know, or online, Amazon, of course. And you can go from here up in terms of Japanese knives. This is a Japanese knife. It's all one piece of steel as opposed to other knives which have uh, a handle often made of wood or plastic. How much is that knife? Um, that's about 70 bucks, I think. Okay. 70 bucks. Um, yeah, they come in a set of three that, that some of the knives might get you for Christmas. Yeah. I think maybe I, now I know what to get you for Christmas. <laughs> and um, another trick is, is go ahead and put your fingers on the blade, which is counterintuitive. I think we tend to stay away from the blade. Put your fingers on the blade because you're going to have more control. Okay. This is peeled, obviously, a little bit. One thing I'm going to do is go for thin when I go for sliced vegetables. Tracy did these on a mandolin, and you see how thin they got. Beautiful. So we want to have them somewhat consistent. And you just go slow with these. I'll show it to you fast, just because it's fun. And you fall on the floor if you do it that way. So go slow, and that's that. Good? Okay. Um, people are always curious about how to do an onion. Uh, so I would like to show you how to do an onion. Ooh, we have some food. Um, these are already frozen. They're not as fancy as the homemade ones you're making, but these are the quick and dirty, but they are, I believe, a real, it's a local dumpling company here in LA, and they sell through Milk and Eggs, and they sell at farmer's yes. markets. Yes, so, they're incredible. They're incredible. And even though they're a little brown, that's because a little bit of soy sauce got burned on Ooh, them. But they're that's, what we call that caramelized. 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 <laughs> Okay, so when you have an onion, oh, do we have a fresh one, maybe? Do you yes. happen to have a fresh onion? As I cheat a, a little bit and already sliced mine up some, but I'll show you how to get rid of the top of it. Oh, that's, thank you, Trace. Okay. So I'm peeling as I go. I'm pulling the peel back on that. And then I'm going to do a little incision. Tracy and I talked about this. Women who um, hold vegetables with one hand and poke at them with the knives with the other hand, as she and I both do. Um, and we don't know why we both do that, but it could be because we both grew up in the South. And um, Southern women. It's a Southern women Cut thing. on their hands. Yeah, cutting on your hand <laughs> like this. Okay, so we all know that that is effective and you have some control. But it's also very dangerous because you don't have that much control. And you slice your fingers and you're a little close to your wrist. So let's exercise caution. <laughs> and we are going to put the thing you're going to cut on the cutting board. That's where it belongs. <laughs> and grasp it with this hand. That is your claw. And what I like to do for onions is, again, with vegetables, it's usually thin. You're going to be thin. Now, maybe I want them diced. So I put the dice in it already. And again, I'm going down. My knife is going down, and I'm just aware of where my fingers are. They're holding the vegetable, and they're also out of the way, get them out of the way of the blade. So you always see chefs like going right with vegetables, but that's not how you do it. Um, that, that you, you find the way that you're comfortable, and then you can work faster. For instance, for me, if I have everything pre-done, I can go pretty fast. Okay. And then also the motion that you, if I, this is for um, a, a dice, mm -hmm. if I want a fine chop, I'm gonna go add it a little more, I need some elbow room here. 
and I keep my tip on the board with this hand, keeping it firm, and then I go across it like that. The only problem about that is it, it still hangs out on your knife. Mm -hmm. But this is, um, all people who go to culinary school are trained in this. They have to move fast. And there's not really one, one with, there are some rules, and they have to do very elaborate cuts. Um, they're, they're perfectly measured, julienne, and so forth. But what I find in restaurant life is that you find the way that works well for you, that where you can safely chop an onion quickly, and that is your style. So for me, if I need to have minced onion, fine chop, I do all these things, get it nice and fine, by hand this way in the end. And there, there I can go fast. But if I'm trying to do this and, and go fast, then I'm a little wild. And whenever you're wild in the kitchen, you, you're, you're in danger. So, onion, cucumber, all these vegetables, um, dressing. This stuff slices really nicely. Yeah, this I is know, I don't, natural I don't think you have yeah. to know anything to do this, so I don't know anything. But look, at, I, Susie had me do this in advance, and even my Napa cabbage looks pretty. Beautiful. <laughs> it's Beautiful. a really easy thing to work with. Yeah, and it, it's going to give you a little different flavor from um, the red cabbage that we've got, or if you have um, white cabbage, the more traditional kind of this, the less, somewhat less Asian that you find, you find, you know, depends on the restaurant where you, where you get um, your Chinese chicken salad. But um, the dressing is key, and um, it has a lot of white wine vinegar. Rice wine vinegar is kind of the trick there. Um, very different from balsamic, very different from stuff you may have kicking around, but once you get some of this rice wine vinegar and start using it, you'll love it. It's light, it's, um, well, it's vinegary. Yeah. <laughs> it tastes like vinegar, but it's a lot lighter than the balsamic, certainly. It's almost sweet. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just very clean and airy, and that's important for this dressing. We don't want it dark, we don't want it heavy. Um, we just want it to lift up um, and freshly um, season all these vegetables. My big complaint about the Chinese chicken salads in LA, there used to be a great restaurant I told you about on Beverly uh, that yes. had this awesome dressing. Because everywhere I go, the Chinese chicken salad dressings are like sweet, sugary sweet. Right. And so it no longer feels rich or yummy or it's just... Or, or even light. Or even light, yeah. 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 So it's hard to chicken find one. Chicken salad so. should be light. But this one, you we started with a peanut base. Yes, yes. yes. Peanut butter, yeah. literally. Peanut butter and vinegar and a little oil. Not a lot of oil. Yeah. Not a lot of oil. So it's a light dressing, and again, this is in your home, and you can control it. Um, and this is just shredded chicken breast right here. We took um, chicken breast, you know, your regular from the grocery store. You can bake it. You can poach it however you're comfortable cooking it all the way through, and then just shredding it. And you see how you get a nice light color. We should dress it and toss it. Yes. Well, here it is. And I also have some of Susie's wontons that we fried up to make them, give them to you something crunchy on top. You know, so often people um, just throw stuff on food. Mm -hmm. And if you slow it down, you notice um, this is what we call a drizzle. If you just go a little bit light, you'll get the benefit, even for a moment, of the color contrast. And everyone photographs their food now, though, too. And you should, if you make something this nice for your guests, take a picture of it. You've got a little more color contrast, and then toss it. I've got my picture. <laughs> so when do you put in the croutons? Um, we'll put those on top. It depends on if you're going to refrigerate it or not. If you're going to refrigerate it, you want to add a little dressing now, refrigerate it. It'll soften it up. But if we put those in the fridge, we'll soften them up too. And we'd rather have them crunchy. Um, you notice you do have a lot of elements to this salad that are going to give you crunch. You have the carrots, you have the cucumbers. The lettuce will soften with the dressing. So Ladies, we'll we had a, just had a telephone call in oh. from uh, Ukraine. Excellent. Asking if the cameraman could just remove the uh, tripod. So he's going to do that now while, while you're working <laughs> right. on your device. You know, I love the Ukraine. Yes, they always come up with such excellent questions. Oh, we haven't made our way to the Ukraine, but we've made it to Italy. And we made it to France. France. Yes, we made it to Italy, France, Budapest. Well, we never keep saying. A, never met a Rudapest. <laughs> Is that a rude <laughs> <baby> joke? <laughs> Oh, that's they're calling in from everywhere. No, that's probably uh, Minsk. <laughs> now, of course, Tracy and I have been actually 
seriously in serious discussion about getting ourselves to Asia. And um, when we come back, yes. all of this will be different. We'll have a lot more um, authenticity. This is stuff, these are things inspired by our American versions of Chinese favorites or Asian favorites. Um, we have Thai town here, we have Korea town here, we have Chinatown. Chinatown. We have Monterey Park. Yes, Best Monterey Dumplings Park. Dumplings. Where they have night markets and the whole. Good market, stuff. Gypsy. So, this is um, this is really quite a show. And it's also very. It's just California too. Get back to you us, soon. Uh, yes. Call back in an hour. Thank you. Everything fresh. No, it's a good recipe, and uh, I'll tell uh, Susie about that. Thank you. No, know, it's just it gets so busy in the season <laughs> here. So um, I've made these, which I just stir fried. I mean, yes. I stir fried in oil. Yes. Taste, tell me what they need, because okay. this is something we all do. Our kids, kids in L.A. love the Trader Joe's dumplings. Yes. You buy bags and bags yes. of those as a snack, but these are a little more special, I think, because they're organic. Ooh, mm. sorry. Yeah. They're juicy. They're very juicy. Oh, they're good. They're okay? Mm -hmm. This what? is my kids' recipe, mm. which is red pepper flakes mm -hmm. and oil. I like and it. Lots it's the red of pepper flakes. It, gives it uh, brightens it up quite a bit. Oh, what I would have, you want on there? You know what I'd have? Ponzu. Okay, let me put a little ponzu? bowl of it. Yeah, you know, you can make ponzu yourself. It's just soy sauce and lemon, right? Oh, but I didn't know that. They make it for you. It's up to you. So lemon and soy together are going to make those flavors pop. I had no idea. Yeah. Okay, so we put, we can then dip it in there, right? Mm -hmm. Isn't that what we use ponzu for? Um, I actually, cook I it think I, I kind of would just drink it. I oh. wouldn't put a shot of rum in there. And I'd be good with that. Wow. Too. No, I'm just kidding. I really like it. It's great. So, I need great So, this. are those good? Mm hmm. Yeah. I just dripped it over myself. Oh. Uh, Wait. We have a tool for that. <laughs> Trace has been working with me a long time, so we can anticipate each other's needs, right, Trace? Absolutely. And now your um, I need muffins to check. are ready. I know. I need to check on those. And you need that, too. How are we looking? They are looking. Oh my God! They they rose a they little. They rose bit. a These little. Are beautiful. That's cute. They'll probably come down. Um, oh my God! They look gorgeous. I hope that they're going to be crunchy. I want them to cool down a little bit and be a little bit crisp on the outside. Um, yeah, you can see them bubbling. Oh, and they smell like ginger snaps, don't they? Oh, wow! <gasps> but they have that extra um, uh, extra lemon cream center. So, so, what are you doing? What is a lychee nut? A lychee nut, oh man, um, I used to know. Let's taste it and find out. Telephone. I'm just kidding. Um, it's a fruit. It's an Asian fruit. Um, well, it's like, I love like, it. This is, I, I, it might be in the onion family? Or it's, it's I'm so telling you, on top of the lemon curd. Family. Family. So how did you I make this? Food, but I'm going to look it up and put it on the website. Oh, lemon curd. If you don't know how to make lemon curd, you have to learn. It's so easy. And it's just, it's a stovetop custard. It's eggs, lemon, sugar. That's really it. You bring those together over a um, sort of medium simmer um, and then double boiler. It'll start to thicken. You add some butter. The recipe's on the blah, 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 blah. That's all you have to do. You just stand and stir. That's the trick. People walk away. It's going to curdle. If you have too much heat, you'll have scrambled eggs. But if you keep that heat low and just stand and stir eggs, so lemon, it is sugar, hard as a hollandaise? Yeah, it sounds like a no, hollandaise. No, it's, it's exactly like a hollandaise. Exactly like a hollandaise. So I just hard. use a lot less butter. It's easy. Okay. It's all easy. right. We'll do a special episode on stovetop custards. How's that? And sauces, yeah. Yeah. Well, vanilla custard is that. Ice cream is made of that. So um, it's an important custard. It's important to know. Um, this is this is the base. We already made some and added some um, whipped cream into that lemon curd and got this really lovely lemony Easter egg color. God, it's beautiful. It is kind of sweet. And um, I'm really letting those cool, but for purposes of demonstration, I'll see what happens when we put some of that ah, in there. Perhaps neatly would be better. <laughs> and that's gonna be hot, but my hands are tough. Like Teflon. <laughs> All right, and we're going to smooth this over. And mm. because it's hot, it's all kind of melting in. We'll just be patient. We'll let them cool off, and we'll continue doing that. Then we'll be able to take these out, and you'll have a little pass-around dessert to give to people. It's good for kids, right? Because you got a little cookie to it's it. It's good for me. It's good for you. Portion control. Okay. <laughs> 
I'm going to give you your very own portion once those cool. Wow. Okay, mm -hmm. yummy. You see where we're going with that. And where does, wait, where does the lychee nut go? Um, on top with the strawberry. Oh, okay. To make it beautiful. Okay, but we'll make this, put this on your marble. Let it cool. Perfect. All right. <clears throat> There's one more thing for our Chinese chicken salad. Chopped peanuts, don't you think? Okay. Since we have the peanuts and the dressing to bring it all together. And again, with the knife skills that you have now acquired. These are, um, these are unsalted peanuts. Oh, thank you. All right, again, this is refresher. On this one, I would just go right, you don't have to do anything other than chop them slowly, because again, they go flying off. Since we're here, we could chop a few herbs just because uh, they came from your garden, didn't they? Yes. So we have a little bit Ooh. of. I might have even brought my special herb tool. I did. The Metzaluna. And I just find like even it doesn't matter what you do, you just put use all these herbs on salads. Right? Yes. Yes. And they go. They go right in. I um, never used to do that. It seems like why didn't we put all these leaves inside? No, I don't think we had gardens. I mean, we didn't. We weren't obsessed with obsessed with them like we are now. Okay, so this is just this is designed for herbs. It's hard the chives because like, the chives are kind of ex extra special. But it it what can I say? It's different. It's a little more gentle way to cut them than with a with a sharp edge knife. Um, I don't know if you like. I just like to do like this <laughs> because it's fun. That's why. But once you get going with this and the herbs, especially when you're mixing different kinds, uh, you'll be a junkie and have to have one like me. What else? Chopped peanuts. We have peanuts, we have almonds, we have Napa cabbage, we have red cabbage, we have cucumber, we have chicken, we have dressing. I think we're ready to eat this, aren't we? Absolutely. We just need two forks and let's do it. <laughs> That's it. I'm ready. We'll, we'll do you want to put a couple of these on? Yes, let's put those on too. Oh, do you want to steam like... the steam the dumplings? Yeah. Okay. I think next time. Okay. So how do you want me to put these on? Just oh, we just maybe break them up and crumble them on there. Okay. Stacy always we'll let the cameraman do it. Have you some too, maybe. Oh, the cameraman. That's right. The third plate. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. And now. We have got so much stuff happening. I think we just barely finished the job, but I think we can. Face, do the oh, honors. Thank you. And I especially like this um, idea when you're in dinner party mode and you know you're going to be going to the store a couple times. You know you have milk and eggs there for whatever you forgot. They can have it to you at 5 a.m. because that's part of their business. You ready? Ready. Going in. I like it. It's every bit as good as the no-name Chinese restaurant, restaurant down the street. on Beverly Boulevard. <laughs> I love mm. it. Thank you, Trace. Mmm. No. It's just... We're gonna do this again with a different food. Perfect Sunday brunch. Yes. And we're going to talk more about about the culture of Asian food when we get back from Asia. Okay? I, I'm looking forward to that. Good. Thank you. Thank you, cameraman. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye.